Shout out to Kev on stage. Again, she said, come to life. What up, y'all? It's your boy Kev on stage. I want to address the Darius Cooks allegations. Like most of Twitter, I found out about Darius's allegations uh, a couple weeks ago when the Kitchen East posted receipts and screenshots and, you know, people started speaking out and things like that. Uh, she asked me if I was going to do a follow-up interview to a show I did called Aska, where we asked him, a millionaire, about, you know, how he became a millionaire. And I told her there would be no follow-up interview. The show was aired in early 2019, April 2019. And I immediately removed the video as to not amplify his voice or cause any further confusion. As well as restaurant, workplace, not practices. Him looks like I was protecting him. So I want to say clearly, I do not support Darius Cooks. Um, I, I believed the stuff he said, like most people at the time of the ask a millionaire interview, I, you know, saw his Shopify screenshots. I saw his dining with Darius stuff. I saw the amount of money that he was posting and I believed him. I, I didn't <laughs> do any due diligence when I did ask a millionaire. He said he was a millionaire. He had posted receipts. I believed it. And that is my fault for having a big platform. Um, I understand more now than ever that with this big platform, I need to be more responsible with how I share it and who I share it with. And for claims like that, in situations that can come up later, um, I should have done more diligence and more research to to make sure those claims were cre credible. And I did not do that, and I apologize. And obviously, hey, one time for for Kev on stage, man. What that? <laughs> earn your leisure, please take note. <laughs> earn your leisure, please take note. That is how it's done. That is what you do. That is how a responsible business owner, a responsible person actually takes care of making sure that one, you're protecting your brand, two, you are protecting the people who consume your content. That is how it's done. It's, that doesn't seem extremely hard to do, no. but apparently <laughs> the guys that earn your leisure don't quite understand. You don't just take a video down you step up to the plate and you acknowledge, hey, I don't support this person who I brought before <laughs> you. That's how it's done. I also want to note something about um, him, Darius showing his, okay, hold on. No, no, go ahead. I also no, want to note something about Darius showing his uh, Shopify screenshots, right? Mm -hmm. Please note with any type of e-commerce, online, whatever, what you see is not the final take home uh, payment, basically, right? So. <laughs> <laughs> People, people, people don't understand that. So, so I, I just want to be clear. What, what the brother, what Aziz is talking about is the Shopify screenshots. What that shows is the revenue. Okay, that means how much money that came in based off the sales of whatever business you had. Doesn't matter if you're selling widgets or if you're selling a service. Whenever you are selling something, you have money come in. And Shopify or any third party payment processor, be it PayPal, if you're selling stuff through PayPal or if you're selling stuff through Square, it doesn't matter. When they are accepting payments for you, they will give you a report. And what's going to be on that report is simply going to be the revenue, money coming in. The only real expenses that that report may show is the processing fee that you pay that company so it's it's kind of industry standard that when you're dealing with a uh credit card payment processor that you're going to be paying them around 2.75 percent that's also probably going to be an additional uh fee per swipe p uh maybe around like 10 uh, 10 cents anywhere between 10 cents to 30 cents something like that <laughs> so really the only thing you're going to see as a deduction is going to be that fee Maybe, but most times if you run a report, they're probably just going to show you how much money came in. So what am I saying? <laughs> Your sales does not show how much money you actually made. OK, there are with fake gurus. There's normally the hugest part of their business expenses is the advertising. Right. Click funnels is not free for them to do the Google ads, the YouTube ads, the Facebook ads, the Instagram ads for them to do all the things to actually get your attention for them to pay to get on podcasts for them to pay for influencers to uh either repost their ads or even do collabs with people who have bigger brands than them 
all of that accounts for advertising and marketing expense. So if someone shows you some screenshot from their Shopify app that says that they had $100,000 come in in one day or a million dollars come in in one month. Okay, yeah, that's good. That's that's revenue. But you want to actually see what, what did you net after your expenses, how much money you make did you make? And most of the time, it's not much. Most of the time, <laughs> sometimes they probably actually lose money on that deal after they you know actually pay off all the expenses they that they had. So don't don't be surprised by the big numbers that show up show up on the screenshot. And for an additional issue, some of those screenshots are fake. They'll just find a screenshot online from someone else and just crop out the name. And then all of a sudden, they present that screenshot to you as if that's theirs, which is <clears throat> ridiculous. So usually, usually when they say someone makes $10,000 off of Shopify or even Amazon FBA, right? <clears throat> usually about half of that will go directly to the product itself. Because usually when, when I was heavy into it, when mm -hmm. I would when I would buy something that's twenty dollars, my goal was to at least sell it for double the price, forty or fifty at the most, right? Right. So let's say I made ten thousand. Honestly, a uh, cool. Let's say just let's just say four thousand goes directly to the product costs, right? I'm left with six thousand. Now we also have advertising, right? Another maybe two thousand. Now we're left with three thousand, and now we have the potential of refunds. Right. Oh, let's not <laughs> let's not forget about the refunds and the chargebacks because a lot of people are unhappy with the service. Oh no, let's not forget about let's not forget about that. They don't show that part. Of it. Yeah, man. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. This is a stark contrast to Earn Your Leisure, who has decided to collaborate with him even after the newly found information. So <laughs> take that how you wish. It's ridiculous. It's obvious what's being done out here. It's on a nightly basis. I hope the world can see now what's really going on out here because it's getting ridiculous. It's really ridiculous. <laughs> yes, man. It's, this is ridiculous, man. Ridic the income claims. I'm sure a lot of y'all get ads on Instagram. Someone telling you. Actually, ask yourself this question, right? <laughs> if someone found a way to make six figures with this money making method, why would they now teach a thousand plus people the exact money making method? You saturate the market, you increase your overall ad expenditure. Why would I tell people, oh, I'm making this amount of money. Now I have 5,000, 10,000 people watching me, following the exact same method, <laughs> going to the exact same forums, going to all the, doing the exact same ad spend which will only increase what I'm going to do, increasing my expenses. Why? Right. That's, a, that's, a, that's such great logical thinking. People, there's no real such thing as millionaire coaches. Millionaire coaches do not exist. People who develop some sort of industry advantage, right? So so in, in econ, what we refer to it as, as a competitive advantage. Mm -hmm. Your competitive advantage is what sets you apart from all your competition. You have something that makes you different from everybody else, and that something gives you an edge. And because you have that edge, you're able to be successful in the marketplace, right? So we refer to that as your competitive advantage. There's no such thing as someone finding a competitive advantage in the marketplace and then selling that competitive advantage to potential competition. That, that doesn't exist. Now, there is a such thing as maybe you would sell your overall business and you exit out of the business. Now, that's one thing, but there's no such thing as millionaire coaches. That's, it's, it's, it's all a scam. No one is going to show you the secret sauce of how they became a millionaire simply to now create competition for themselves in the same marketplace. Most of the time, what you find is you find guys who maybe found some sort of glitch in a the matrix. They yeah. found some way to hustle and make money. But by the time they sell that that secret outdated. sauce to you, it's that it's outdated. You can't do it anymore because if they could do it and continue to make money, they wouldn't be selling it. 
<laughs> they wouldn't sell it to you. They only start to sell their secrets to their success to the everyday man and woman because it's outdated and it doesn't work anymore. People stop looking for shortcuts to success and just grind and do the hard work. And I'm telling you, if you prepare yourself properly, the opportunity will come and that's when success is going to be there. But when you're trying to find shortcuts and you're looking for the opportunity to be there without actually being prepared, you may get some level of success in the short term, but ultimately you're going to be a failure. That's for the lucky people. Most of y'all, over 90%, will never even get to that point. To be a flash in the pan, to be someone that's successful for a minute and then lose it all. Most of y'all will just lose it all. <laughs> you will never be successful. That's just not how these things work. So grind, work hard, strive to find a competitive advantage. What is a competitive advantage? A competitive advantage is something that you're going to be able to find by acquiring some sort of skill set that your competition does not have or be someone who thinks outside of the box and you bring something into the marketplace that other people have not thought of yet and you can corner that market. But we're not going to get into that today because I can keep going over and over again. Please, Brother Aziz, as we go, what, what are your closing remarks? Uh, basically, when it comes, just, just just in general, I'll say uh -huh. one, one last thing based on my experience. Like I said, being credit card debt, please don't <laughs> over leverage. <laughs> please do not over leverage yourself. From what I've understood, from what I've come to understand, credit card utilization is is a big component as to why people even get into credit card debt. They'll yes. invest in a business. They'll expect to make seven hundred a thousand dollars in return, but then. The, the business, you start getting refunds, the expenses are too much, and now you have a thousand dollar liability on your credit card. For me personally, at all times, which, whenever, when I, just in my daily, day to day life, I net my overall credit card utilization doesn't go over 20%. If I want to spend, if I, if I, if I, I'm going to make a big purchase, I'm mm -hmm. literally transferring the money within seconds of making that big purchase. Maybe I'm scarred from, from, from credit cards. <laughs> all right. <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, because once once you get in credit card debt like that and you finally find your way out of it, you never want to go back. Mm -mm. You never want to find yourself back in that deep, deep, dark pit. You've been telling me I want more, baby, don't start that, don't start that, no. I told you from the start what I'm perfect. When I fall, I fall deep, I love you. Can't poison you. I don't know this feeling's flying in the air, but me can't catch that, can't catch that, I'm here no. for a good time, not a long time, so don't fall in love. I ain't trying to use your play games. I'm hoping that we're on the same page.